homelessness and disadvantage for years. To celebrate their 10th anniversary, the choir is performing around Australia with their founding artistic director, Jonathan Welsh, who joins me now from our Melbourne studio. Thanks very much for joining us this afternoon. Let's start at the beginning. You're the founder of this choir. What inspired you to start it? Oh, well, I was travelling overseas in North America and I read about the Montreal Homeless Men's Choir back in 2001 and I decided to come back to Sydney where I was living at the time and created the first choir for people experiencing homelessness and disadvantage with the Sydney Street Choir. And then I came back to Melbourne and was approached by Jason Stevens from Fremantle Media and the ABC to recreate the project and uh, Choir of Hard Knocks is now uh, about to celebrate 10 years, which is just so fantastic. And how has the choir impacted the people who sing it at, over those last 10 years? I think many of the choir members that are still engaged with the choir love the connection and that sense of family and inclusion that they have each week. But the most important thing is that so many of the original Choir of Hard Knocks members and those who have joined us have also moved on either to full-time and part-time study and work. And we heard amazing stories at our big concert at Hamer Hall last night um, of many of the Choir of Mem Hard Knocks members that have even completed master's degrees in organisational psychology and gone on to do other amazing things. So the pathway that the choir builds for people who are experiencing homelessness and disadvantage and all ranges of mental health issues and other, other health issues uh, really is transformational for them. And I imagine the choir members themselves form quite a unique bond with each other. Absolutely. I think, you know, it's that sense of family and connection that they have through singing together and the power of music uh, that we could see so clearly. And uh, the audiences around Australia are already in Perth, uh, Alice Springs, Sydney Opera House, where we were performing two or three weeks ago, Hamer Hall yesterday, and uh, in Brisbane on Friday, October the 7th, we're about to bring the concert to the public uh, in Brisbane for the first time as well there. You mentioned the power of music. What is it about music that transforms these people? Look, I think music allows people to just be themselves and to forget what's happening perhaps in their lives currently or perhaps what's gone on in their past. Uh, and there's lots of great research that's uh, happening here in Australia and around the world over the last decade since Choir of Hard Knocks came out. We're just about to finish an 18-month research project, in fact, with the University of Queensland, with the School of Hard Knocks that I launched four years ago which is my vision now for this work moving forward to help uh, create more programs and engage more teachers and other people to be involved in the work. But really what's most important about this 10th anniversary tour um, is that the Choir of Hard Knocks has really struggled the last six years financially uh, to keep running. We have no state or federal funding here in Victoria and it's an opportunity I think for the public to re-engage with the choir and also to help fi finance and support the choir singing into the future so we continue to create these wonderful stories of so many people um, moving on in their lives through music. So there are financial struggles but what are the other struggles that you've found in keeping this choir running over the last 10 years? Uh, many of the choir members um, still or they all still deal really with their various health issues that they have 24-7. You know the music and the choir is not going to take away a mental health issue or a physical or an intellectual disability but what it really brings to everybody and I have to pay tribute to my amazing team that's wrapped their arms around the choir the last 10 years and supported me and the choir members to keep the choir going. Um, really I think any of the issues that we've had over the last 10 years have been overcome because the choir members themselves are truly inspiring and they're an extraordinary group of singers. I mean the public yesterday I think at Hamer Hall couldn't believe what they were hearing 10 years on. I suppose they've had a, a little bit of training from me um, week in, week out. But um, I think the most important thing is that I want to keep the choir shining and that I really want the public to get back behind the choir again. And they can go to choirofhardknocks.org.au and make a donation. We've just released a new 10th anniversary CD with fantastic tracks uh, with some of our fantastic patrons. Mark Holden, Bruce Woodley from The Seekers has written two beautiful new verses of I Am Australian. Grace Knight from Eurogliders uh, and a host of other wonderful uh, Australian entertainers have supported and 
is still supporting the choir 10 years on. So you can buy the new CD. It will be uploaded to the website uh, in the coming weeks and uh, still support the choir. And we have DGR status, so people can make a donation uh, of over $2 and they get a tax-deductible receipt back for that as well. Yep, and keeping an eye out for the choir on their national tour. Jonathan Welsh, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks so much. Time now for the weather. Here's Graham Creed. A high pressure system is the dominant feature through much of the eastern states and as a result of that this frontal system moving towards South Australia is relatively weak and it will weaken further as it moves east as that high pressure system starts to drive it further south. But to the